So we have a cosmos, which is only what it is because it is full of different forces of attraction. I mean, I mean just, just the fact that we know that reality is built on a law of attraction. It, shouldn't that make us really interested, actually? So we, we are living in a world which um, takes its course because there is profound attraction at play. There was a um, Renaissance um, Italian um, philosopher, um, Fracastoro was his surname, and he termed the, coined the term um, universal sympathy, sympatia universalis, universal sympathy. If, if you look at physics, you see that actually it is about attraction. And um, let us just look at this attraction, not from the um, technically detached standpoint of a physicist um, or of a scientist, which says, okay, th these, are, these are neutral um, dead uh, laws without any sense. They are just natural laws. Let us just look at what is happening. And um, again, I think we can look at what is happening because we take part in what is happening and we know what is happening. So we, we know some, something about physics because we are physical bodies. And um, so we can see that the, the, the world is made up of attractions. And um, the, the, the basic natural sciences describe attractions and attractions create diversity. They create newness. They create, they create um, meetings of things which have never met and which through and during this meeting transform themselves mutually. So just go, going a, a one level, going one level higher um, to um, from the, these basic forces to um, the world of chemistry, um, every, every um, molecule is the result of attraction between atoms. And um, the, the laws of chemistry, the, which you have to learn when you're a biology student, like I was, you have to learn all these um, very, very um, scientific rules and you have to calculate them and you have to there's there's something in chemistry which is the oxidative force for, for example the, the 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 ability to um to actively take part in an oxidative reaction and uh, you can calculate with that but this is this is if you look at it from this um experiential side this is a way um, or a degree to which different molecular at, atomic beings are attracted to others. And, and we, we start to have some um, regularities in the world through these attractions. So one, one, of the, um, one of the elements which come into being through attraction, which is utterly important for us, for life, you all know, is water. This I want, just want to say, um, to, to, to show you the fascinating world of relationships, of, of, of erotic bonds um, in water, looking at water. So every water is made of um, one oxygen atom and two hydro, hydro, hydrogen atoms, you know, H2O. And, um, and they are... Um, they are they fall in love with one another and then they they are married for life so they really form a really 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 strong bond but then again the um the oxygen molecule in water is also somehow having a slighter bonds with other hydrogen molecules around so they they are slightly polyamorous i'd say water is slightly slightly oscillating between monogamous and polyamorous. And this is why it becomes viscous. This is, this is why it becomes water. Otherwise, it would be a gas. It would somehow um, be um, much less um, connected. And um, so the, 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 
the potential of water has to do with the fact um, that um, that water is incredibly willing to bind, to relate. And on the other hand, that it's absolutely promiscuous. It's, it's, you see, we have already a, a, some paradox here, which is, which is life-giving. So that's, that's an example, if you look at, um, at physics, or at chemistry from the standpoint of relationships. And um, I wouldn't necessarily say that, um, that these, these things happen um, on an individually consciously level. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily, say, necessarily say this, but I would say that we can see this interesting tendency, this desire in, the, in reality um, to build connective tissues, to, um, to, to, to build community. To, to somehow stick together and then to break up again. So to be, to be willing to bind and then to be promiscuous, to build these circles of um, living up and then breaking down and going away, fading away, dying, dying off. And um, so this, this shapes our world um, because, because the, um, the, the mutual parts in this um, always change through connection. So if you fall in love, your love relationship changes you and you change your partner through your relationship. And if this is a life-giving relationship, you will both be changed in a life-giving way. And this is what we see in the physical universe. So we see oxygen and hydrogen having this crazy affair and um, creating water, and water creating life, water making so many more po things possible. And, um, and to me, this is a very, very important um, principle that, um, that erotic attraction creates newness, creates change, and never leaves anyone involved in the same state. Every, everyone changes. And, um, and this is the narrative of the world. This is the story of the world. And we'll just let, let's keep a little bit with water. This is, water is my guiding, um, my guiding um, how can, creek. We're following the creek. So, so one, one of the one of the most impressive things for me is if you follow water, if you go to water, if you see water in the landscape, if you see water in rivers and in, in rivulets and creeks in the ocean, you see how it, um, how it shapes stone, how it shapes the earth, how it shapes land, and how it is shaped by this. So for me, one of the, one of the key experiences in thinking about this was when I, when I sat with the little mountain creek in my um, second hometown, which is in the Apennines in Italy, um, very mountainous place with these fantastic mountain streams, um, these beds full of pebbles and stones. And I was sitting there and I was staring at the water like all of us somehow like to do, staring at water. I'll, I'll come to this, why this might be great. And, um, and I was realizing that the water meeting the stone, you see, it's, 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 it's very simple. So I'm, I, I, I excuse myself for being so physical but it's important and it's, you, you, you know now I mean it also, I, it has also always this inside dimension. So water, water in the mountains actually rains down on the mountains, on stone, on rock, and then it's somehow finds it, its way in the depressions and it, it flows down. And by this over the, over bill, millions of years creates the shape of the mountains and the valleys so already there, we have a, we have a, a sort of um, erotic exchange, transforming both poles, both, both players into something else. 
And then if we look at rivers, we see that the, the water shapes the stones into something which looks very much like water. Did you, did you every, every one of you already held a, a beautiful rounded pebble in their hands, right? Because somebody, like, people like me steal them even, they, they, they take them home. They, they go home with heavy pockets full of stones and um, they take them even in airplanes and uh, you, you all know this, we probably do the same. And these, these pebbles are so beautifully shaped and round that they become round and um, smooth like water because they are in touch with water. To me, that's so fascinating. They are they're ragged, they are hard, and then water starts its work. And then it's, it's a sort of change of identities because if you look at water running over stone, it's not longer smooth. It's, it starts to be choppy. It starts to be ragged. It starts to splash. It starts to be noisy. You know, it, it starts to take the form of stone. So in a way, it's this, this process, this very, very simple process of meeting of two different elements somehow makes one element know something about the other but not knowing it in the sense of writing it down and then telling it somebody, but knowing it in the sense of expressing the essence of the other through its own essence, through its own being. And you see, this to me is profoundly erotic. Meeting other, meeting other to a degree that my own essence expresses the essence of the other through the meeting or in the meeting. This is profoundly erotic. And, um, and I would say the world is built like this. Very interestingly. I mean, I we have no idea. We, maybe we can have an idea. We'll, we'll work towards an idea why this is so. But um, this is how the world works. It's, it's full of this erotic desire. And erotic desire is a way to know. It's a way to know myself and it's a way to know other. If we are able to hold one another in the balance of, of giving life to both. So take it again. And now you bring it closer to your mouth and you can smell it. So you can smell that this li liquid, this watery smell, this layer of water vapor and um, and take a sip, take a sip. Feel the water in your mouth. Feel your water, the water filling your mouth, and when you swallow, feel it going down like a little stream, a little rivulet in your body. And you can take another sip, and you can you can actually feel how it enters your stomach. So you can feel your body from the inside while doing this. You see again. You, as a water being, feel your being from the inside using water. And, um, and you know, every one of us is part of our watershed. Your body is part of the watershed, like every river is. Okay. Now, while drinking, imagine your most beloved source of water your most beloved stream it's not it's not it's not important if it's if you can actually drink it or if you actually can't drink it the most beloved source of stream and then drinking this water just know that this is the stream you love and you drink this just imagine this it flows from the source into you flows from the source to you and then it flows back into the ocean and maybe you feel gratitude so enjoy the feeling of gratitude for being directly connected to this source so that's all and um, you can do this every time you drink water you can think of your most beloved little stream and have it run through your body. So it's interesting that to me, there was one stream which immediately came into my head. So I didn't need, I didn't need to think long. It was immediately clear which one 